If you've been decluttering for a while and you've made progress, but you still find yourself asking, why does my home still look cluttered? It may be because you haven't addressed visual clutter. Visual clutter is a sneaky little thing because you don't notice it at first glance, or so you think. Your brain definitely notices. Your subconscious is constantly scanning the room for information. And it's so easy to have overwhelm or chaos in other areas of our life. But our home is definitely an area where I think most of us want to have peace, calm, and just to feel good. I think there's definitely something to be said about how when we feel good, whether that be because we're wearing clothes that we actually like, we have a good hair day, or we just finally have a clean room, we feel better about ourselves. And then we present a better version of ourselves to whatever activity we're doing. So I hope that you find these tips helpful. And if you like these sort of videos, I will also soon be posting a video on different ways that you can make your home look cozy on a budget. So be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you won't miss when I post that video or any of my other videos on minimalism and slow and intentional living. With all that being said, let's get on with the first one. Remove labels. Now I'm not saying that you shouldn't label things because labels can be super helpful in order to help you have things put back in their places if you have kids or a husband that you just wanna put things back where they actually belong and have a home. Labels can be a great way to get this accomplished. Or if you have people over and you want them to actually help themselves to your kitchen, that can be super helpful in order to keep things organized and in their perspective locations. So I'm not talking about those kinds of labels. The labels that I'm talking about are things that may already be on your packaged materials, like your soap dispenser, your shampoo bottle, things like that, that you don't necessarily need a label for. When you go to a fancy upscale location, you will notice that their soap dispensers do not have labels on them. And that's because simplicity is visually appealing to the eye. So doing something as simple as removing the label from your soap dispenser can make it look so much nicer. A quick tip too, if you find yourself removing a label and it just has that sticky gunky residue on it, place rubbing alcohol and it will just come right off. This was an old bottle of almond oil that I had and it looks so fancy. You wouldn't even know this is just basically a regular drugstore product. Along the same lines of removing labels off of purchased items is also removing word signs or just paring down to a select few. I'm not gonna lie, I actually have word signs in the home because I had a crazy chalk painting phase where I basically wanted to chalk paint everything that I could get my hands on. So I made word signs for both of my kiddos. But besides that, I've basically removed all other word signs because even though you might not think that they add extra clutter to the home, your subconscious is constantly trying to read these words. So I would say it's definitely okay to have some of them if you want to be reading something constantly because you like what it says or you just really value that for some reason. But just paring them down to a select few can make a huge difference. And I've even gone so far as to remove the labels off of my clothes hangers because I had basically clothes hangers from the store and even just popping them off and taking them off made such a huge difference in my closet that just made it look so much more like a boutique. So find any areas in your home where you see word signs or even just letters or symbols and things like that and you'll notice a huge difference. This next one is to put away frequently used items. I know it sounds counterintuitive because you wanna save time and you wanna be more efficient. But if you're gonna use that coffee mug tomorrow, actually put it in the cabinet rather than just leaving it out because clutter attracts clutter. It's so much easier to just pile items on top of an already messy pile. And so this is what you're trying to avoid by doing this, is to just put things back where they go. It may take just a few seconds more, but it will save you from having those piles add up. And this next one is similar to that, but it's to keep your counters clear. There's something about flat surfaces that are just constantly trying to attract clutter. But again, the more you stay on top of this, the easier it becomes, and then it just kind of becomes more of a habit for you. So if you just kind of get in the habit of keeping your counters clear once you've actually used them, it will be much more likely that it will stay that way. Once you declutter more, you'll also find that you have more space within your cabinet. So you can also store things that would normally be on your countertop within your cabinet. So for example, I have this knife rack here that I can just keep within my cabinet. And then that way it keeps my counter clear. Use a color palette. You definitely don't have to have white walls like I do. It was something that I never thought I would have. I had like these bluish grayish walls and I was crazy about them. I had them everywhere that we had lived beforehand, but I, I like the white walls. You don't have to have that. If you like color, that's, that's awesome. You can definitely have pops of color in different ways, but use your colors strategically. 
That's something that I've implemented into the decor in the home. I've also done it with my closet and just different areas. And I find that it just all is much more cohesive and it all just kind of matches together a whole lot more. And I definitely still have color because I have this fuzzy armchair that you would definitely not find on the cover of a minimalist magazine. But again, it, it does have color, but it matches with my other colors and so that it kind of blends together. So find the colors that you like, that you would love to have in your home, and it will make things just look much more cohesive. Also curate your paintings and your artwork. If you think about it, when you go to a museum, someplace that wants to showcase the art, they don't just have a whole bunch of paintings cluttered all over the wall, because that would be difficult to appreciate that one painting, those details, the landscape or portrait or whatever it might be. So for example, we have a very large painting across from our bed. My husband loves this painting. He actually saved it because somebody was going to throw it away. He was so sad because as a painter, he can appreciate that somebody took so much time to be able to create this, the imagination that they had, the details that they put into it. And he appreciates this. This is actually the painting that we look at every single morning as we wake up. And if it had been cluttered around with lots of other paintings all around it, we wouldn't be able to appreciate its beauty because it would be so much to look at, distracting from the one that we want to look at. So curate your paintings, your artwork, the ones that are most meaningful to you, most special to you, and it will make a huge difference in making you just feel happier. I love this next one is to get rid of big bulky furniture. The reason that I love this is because you can declutter so many little items and it doesn't really make a huge difference in your visual side. You just don't really notice that much of a difference. And so you can kind of feel like, oh, I'm not making progress with decluttering and minimizing. But if you get rid of a big bulky item, you will instantly notice a difference. Previously, we had a massive four poster bed and we sold that one and my husband and I built a new bed. I jumped up and down like a little kid once he brought that in. Not only because of the sentimental value because we built it together, but also because removing that giant bed made our room look so much more clear, so much more open, light and cozy. It made such a huge difference that had we removed just a bunch of little items, it would not have made such a noticeable difference. Number eight is to find solutions for your messy zones. So for example, paperwork. Of course, you might wanna take an entire day to actually declutter your paperwork and digitize it and shred it and do whatever it is that you need to do with it. If you find yourself constantly tossing things in a particular area, find a solution for those things. So for example, we have a mail holder. So anytime mail comes in, of course we address it, but that's where it kind of goes initially or our keys. Our keys, whenever we come in the home, they get hung right there. The mudroom is definitely an area that would constantly get messy. Our shoes would constantly be all over the place. There would be dirt and dust and all sorts of things all over the floor. And so I basically, because we had pared down our shoes, we had an extra shoe rack that we no longer needed. So I placed that one in the mudroom. And now everybody knows you just put your shoes in the shoe rack and it looks so much more clear. The shoe rack also addressed other messy zones for us. So for example, we have chickens and our basket that we use to carry eggs in would just always kind of be scattered around the house because it would be too much of a nuisance for us to take it out, bring it back in. So this is the spot that it lives in. And then because I homeschool, we end up with lots of artwork. And then this is just also an area where we drop in cardboard boxes, just random boxes that we need to uh, dispose of because we use lots of bonfires. So this gets recycled in that way. And so it addressed our messy zones so that the chaos that would have normally been all over the floor now looks a little bit more organized. I'm certain that it would look so much better if we had a nice pretty little basket and some kind of pretty box over there. But you know what? Sometimes you just gotta make do with what you've got. So think of those areas that just commonly attract clutter in your home and either use like a basket or a rack or a box or something that just kind of puts them out of the way and makes them look organized. Number nine is super simple is to hide cords and wires. Either tie them together, put them behind another item or move them around so that they're not visible. For example, our router and all of our internet stuff is stuffed under our sofa, so it's never visible, but it's always clear and in an area where I can access it very quickly should we need to reset or do anything like that with it. Out of sight, out of mind. Number 10 is to use baskets, trays, or bins. So for example, if you love to have throw blankets, but you don't want them all over the floor or all over your sofa, have a basket for them. If there's a particular item that you're constantly in need of, a basket can be a great way to reduce visual clutter while also making it easy to reach for. Number 11 is to keep your shoe area tidy. 
Something that's helped us a lot with this is to just have very few shoes, but we do take off our shoes inside the home. And if we just leave them scattered, it looks like a huge mess versus if we just take the time to place them in a line, it looks so much better. Now training my kids to actually do this is the project that I'm currently working on. Number 12, I kind of touched on this when I talked about addressing your messy areas, but I want to speak specifically about this one because it might be your messy area and it's to have a drop station for when entering the home. So for example, we have added hooks to our mudroom so that whenever we come in the home, if we have a bag or a backpack or whatever, we need to hang up, that goes in there. Our keys have a home. They have a little hook where we can place them in. Our mail has a home. We can place that in the little mail holder. So everything that we come in the home with has an area where it's designated to go. You can also use a little tray for keys, but the key here is to have a key, no pun intended. The key is to have a home for all of these items so that you're never finding yourself wondering, where are my keys? That never happens if these items have a designated area for them to go. 13 is to remove or relocate refrigerator art. My kids love to make art, but they know that those front doors of that refrigerator are not gonna have anything posted on them. We actually have the ability to put things on the side because the side of the refrigerator is exposed. So if they make something, it is going to be alternated and we will have one picture. And then once they make a new one, that new picture will get posted, but it's not gonna get cluttered up with lots of different photos. So they basically have to pick their favorite one and they can showcase that. Alternatively, you can just remove any art or stuff that you have on your refrigerator or find a different home for them. This next one is for my people that have stairs. A great way to make sure that things actually get to where they're supposed to go, whether upstairs or downstairs respectively, is to have a basket or a bin right beside the stairs. So this way, the next time you go up, you can just take that bin with all the stuff that belongs in the upstairs or the downstairs. So things actually get put back in their respective places. And lastly, number 15 is to make sure that your floors are clear. As a mom that has two little kiddos that love to scatter toys all over the floor, I know that nothing makes more of a difference than making sure that my floors are clear. And this also goes towards things like putting your clothes on the floor or things like that. The more that piles on the floor, the more it attracts more mess. But it also just makes such a difference because it makes your space look so much more open. And lastly, for sticking to the end, I couldn't not give you this one, is to have a designated bin or a basket or box or whatever it is that you want to use for items that are meant to leave your home. Because you might think to yourself, well, I need to give this back to that person, or I need to declutter this item. But if you never actually go get that item and relocate it in order to bring your attention to that item, chances are it might not actually ever leave your home. So I have a designated basket for any items that I know I need to declutter. And that way, once it kind of gets filled up, I have to address it and I have to either donate them, sell them, give them back to their people, whatever it is that I need to do with them, but they need to leave. So I think if we could summarize all of these tips in one, it would probably be give your items a home. And if that home is somebody else's, then make sure to get those items there. That's it for today's video. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you won't miss when I post a new video. And if there's any particular videos that you would like to see from me, make sure to put it down in the comments below or send me an email. Until next time, bye for now.